Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, the transfer portal is swirling. We'll get to both Red Raider football and Red Raider basketball news. A list of names to discuss from the most impactful to the who and all in between. Coming up next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Everything runs through Lubbock. Good to see you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day with the only Chris Level. I'm KC Cowan. Thanks for joining us on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already so you never miss an episode and man if you miss an episode this week you may feel like you are a decade behind because there's <laughs> so much happening so make sure you're subscribed on youtube so you never do uh chris i'm getting the feeling of, of directing an airport terminal with arrivals going this way departures going this way we're zigging we're zagging for a myriad uh of reasons really i mean a whole lot to break down here as we'll get into a football conversation and we're going to get into a basketball conversation really all in encompassingly today as we talk transfer portal comings and goings uh would like to start with big maple far dawes amac biggest regret for me no ability to use that nickname in a basketball setting now we'll only use it in a departure setting but man so much to think about and i've just got so many questions i'm sure like a lot of tech fans uh do today about how these things have come to be yeah, this, this this week's giving me a headache, man. <laughs> I mean, it, it is just <laughs> like, I mean, I, I just want to be like Zach Morris and Saved by the Bell and just call time out, man, and just like st- stop everything. So like, you know, no no more no more chaos uh, can, can, can happen. Okay, so, and, and we'll spend a lot of this show trying to sort through uh, the a lot of this uh, in, in various programs, but as far as the basketball program, uh, that that is uh, bizarre news. Uh, the timing is not necessarily bizarre. Uh, here, here, I mean, because he just got his uh, cast off. Uh, he was at uh, the game a couple nights ago against Eastern Washington. Uh, I, I I think here here are the questions that that really we we can we can ponder together. I guess. What does it mean for you at face value? What does it mean for your basketball team? I don't necessarily know if it really means anything because I think that the odds were heavily in favor of him really not being able to factor in even, even optimistically for another six weeks to two months. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking, I mean, early mid February, maybe, I mean, and, and, and again, Maybe and, and we'll get into the, the the reports that were out there too. But so I, I don't know if ultimately from a basketball standpoint it, it it really affects you in any way. Now it does eliminate. You know we 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 end the show every day with keep hope alive. It does eliminate the hope that you can add more size and some help is on the way and you kind of see it off into the distance. And, and whether there was different degrees of timetables on when he could actually play versus when he couldn't. The, the, the facts are this big people with foot problems that that is a slow go and and the odds are you know you know how much atrophy had his had his calf and foot and ankle and all, all the tendons and muscle and everything around that how much had he had of that with just the inactivity over the last three months ish or whatever um and and then you know when you come back you, you can easily cause an injury to your – because you start, your body starts overcompensating. So we can get into the medical part of it all we want. Then, then, then you have to factor in, okay, are you in – you know, can you can you handle running up down the floor a whole lot at the level that we're going to ask you to? Uh, and, and how many minutes can you realistically give us? So the, And we've touched on some of this. And, and that's and, – and even if you can, it, you're still – it's still a, a bit of a process. So from a basketball standpoint, I don't – I don't know if realistically you you know because the, the the biggest thing that you the hit you take is there's no hope of help on the way. That's the problem. It's like you're just waiting. 
some point, man, we know we're going to get a little bit of reinforcement. And, and maybe it's great, maybe it's not, but it's it's something, and it's some size, and we desperately need it, yeah. and, and all those things. So that that's the that's the big real news here. The other questions, though, that do you want you want to you want to react to any of that right there before I I think I generally I to... <laughs> no I, I think I'm just generally in agreement with you because I yeah. had very very low expectations he was going to factor in. Um, I am today as it relates to AMAC, just kind of a. Well, we hardly knew you, you know, yeah. can't miss something you never had, guys. So I love fair. another straw to stir a drink, as you kind of talk about, well, just a, a change up coming down the pipe. But I mean, whatever. I, I don't know. I hope <laughs> the guys who were throwing cash at him uh, have got some rebate program <laughs> as he's walking away. But sign yeah, no, yeah, I, I don't really have any disagreement there. And, and, and so, and, and so, Callan, let's get into the, 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 the timing. OK, the timing makes complete sense. In, in, in as shocking as it was, the timing is, is is what it is, and I won't be surprised if if there are others that, that enter the portal either, because this is just kind of what happens. Sadar Calhoun last year, um, you know, nobody that was just kind of out of the blue, and it's just like he's here one day, gone the next, and then like, well, okay, didn't even get to say goodbye, you know. I mean, that's just kind of yeah. um, so it, because, and I say the timing is because finals are over. You know, you're 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 now in that window to where you, you've got some time before the next semester starts at other places. So if anybody's looking to make a move or anybody is disgruntled or or I are getting more money to go play somewhere else, who knows? All those reasons could and should be on the table because that's what is rumored and discussed and all that everywhere around the country these days. So the the timing, as surprising of it as it was, it makes complete sense. But here, here are the questions, I guess, that I, I was pondering to myself. Wait, Chris. Okay, I do have something there, though. Okay. I feel like I'm hearing you say that uh, this is not a name that you thought we'd be talking about in this instance, though, because we did talk about Walton and other guys that aren't getting minutes. Is the player uh, that, that, out of the is, blue surprise? Yeah, that, that surprised me. Yeah. I mean, mm. I, I don't I – don't, I, I, I didn't – no indication there. And, and again, I, I'm only saying that because – the other guys we talked about, hey, man, you're not really getting to play. Right. I mean, this is a case where I mean, I, I'm aware of the report about, you know, I mean, they're trying to get me back much sooner than. than Wanted you know, to ask whatever. you about that. Let me read that tweet for those who don't live yeah. on Twitter. Uh, Jeff Goodman, college basketball reporter, uh, says one key reason AMAC is transferring is because he feels he's being rushed back too quickly by Mark Adams from injury. Adams said publicly AMAC will be back playing by January 1st. Source said AMAC had hard cast removed Monday after 12 weeks. So, yeah, how do you view that? But first, today's episode brought to you by our friends at Bet Online, your headquarters for live stats, live betting, scores, odds, lines, props more than ever before. As we're getting into that home stretch of football season, NFL playoffs. Going to be just around the corner. Bowl season almost on deck. You want to get the bet online to check out all the angles, all the action, all the angles on the action. The easiest place to keep up with your team on game day and the events that matter to you. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about what the trends are looking like this week with Bet Online, where the game starts. How do you view that? So I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't, the medical part of this, I, ju I just know foot injury. I know it's pretty severe, obviously, because of how long he's been out. Uh, I, I knew that, see, here, here's what you get into. A lot of times, uh, I have no idea what, what Mark was told by medical people. I don't know what the exact injury was or what the prognosis is. I just, I just know that sometimes coaches are very vague with that, or it's, it's kind of a, you say some things publicly just to kind of make sure that the opponent has to prepare for, you know, certain players or, or whatever. I mean, we see this game played on a weekly basis, football, basketball. I mean, everybody's vague with injuries and you right. kind of aren't necessarily uh, transparent and forthcoming and all that and telling everybody specifically uh, what, what exactly is going on just because it's kind of, I don't, I don't know, you would call it gamesmanship or whatever. Okay, so there, there's that part. Uh, so I don't know if we take it necessarily at face value. Was he just trying to, hey, man, we want to make sure TCU is, is having to prepare for the possibility of playing with two bigs and on and on it goes. OK, so there, yeah. there's that. Um, 
The second thing is, 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 you know, Mark, Mark uh, will, I'm sure be asked about this, you know, the player departure and were you trying, I mean, I don't, I don't know how, how that will go, but um, if, if he was uncomfortable about being sped up, if he was felt like that, Hey, I need more time. That whole thing is tricky and touchy and, and, and everything anyway. And there's probably privacy laws and all those things, but here, so here, here's my, Here's my questions, though, that kind of ties into the conversation we're having now. I, I think there's NIL money involved here with, with a lot of these guys. I think with a lot of the portal guys, I think there's there's a lot of – I mean, and that was no secret around town. Casey, you were, you were well aware of that. That was really not a secret. There was various speaking engagements involving, you know, lots of people and, and a lot of money uh, being discussed and all that. Two I don't, plus for a, a hoops team. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I don't, not reportedly, purportedly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I don't know individual wise who was getting what, but I, I, I think it's fair to say some of these portal guys were getting, you know, so here, here's my question. D- does that, you know, if, if it's a, if it's a payment system, does that stop once he enters the portal? Like I believe it did with TJ Shannon last year, that would be my guess. If so, man, you, you're, you're really going to walk away from, like a, a a pretty sweet deal, and and then and here's here's the the thing you you you, you know the old saying about man you don't take a new job without or quit a job without having a, a new one lined up right I mean some people do do that but I think good advice would be hey man if you're gonna bail out make sure you're good you're good somewhere else I I can't imagine that he's got something lined up because right now he's he's injured he's not close to playing necessarily. Um, or he may not think so if this report is true, and and yet you haven't played at all, and so you're 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 going to try to get get a new deal elsewhere because that's the way the college basketball works. Let's just call it what it is, and, and you're trying to get get a new deal sure. elsewhere based off of what you did at at uh, at your previous school, and so it, the, the whole thing that that po- that part is very confusing to me. Uh, you know, is he homesick? Is is there some other reason uh, that is, is not been reported yet? All, all fair questions to ask. Well, as it relates to good, what Goodman's saying, I'm like, wait a second. The coach is trying to get you back too soon? Uh, well, what does that say about you anyway? And look, I know we live in the age of, ooh, don't try to be tough and get out there. Wait. <laughs> I, I get all that. But how are other programs, and I'm sure he's going to have a landing spot. Somebody will want this dude to play basketball or give him a chance to play basketball. But how many out there are looking at that like, oh, this guy's bailing on a program because he thinks the coach is rushing his injury? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it just kind of adds some uh, fog, I guess, to uh, his personal Yeah, and and there there are plenty of people that, you know – would tell you in the summertime Bacho was better than him. I didn't see any of that. I have no idea, uh, you know, and that, that, that it, you know, maybe he wasn't what you'd hoped he would be. Who, who the heck knows that maybe that's sour grapes. What I, there's just no way to. Well, can to the know. Bacho thing be a part of this equation, given what Bacho's done so far this season? That's one thing I've been wondering today. As in, as in, he's seen what kind of competition is that? That yeah, position? I mean, I, I think that you, if you want to have that theory, I would completely buy it. Yeah, I, I do think want to have that theory. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's that. that's very, <laughs> my, my my thing though is that I think I think they needed they they need both or they need somebody else sure. like him. They, they just need more size. This is a, yeah. a tiny team that I mean, Eastern Washington was head and shoulders taller than you across the across the board when with no Bacho plan. And, and that's weird to see. Um, got this Power Five, Big Twelve team, and Eastern Washington was just taller than you, kind of at every spot. And uh, you know that. So yeah, you don't want to give away size like that. I mean, nothing's going to make you feel good about right. Yeah, kind of but but I, yeah, away. it's just it's just like uh, it's hard to kind of process it. Uh, Is there any? Can I ask this fan question? Is there any underlying disgruntlement, chemistry issues, whatever? that's floating here below the surface and this is possibly the first bubble to burst because you haven't been in a good run here. I think it's fair to say you've been in some kind of funk for whatever reasons, just on the court, you know, as a team, we've had such weird minute allocation as far as reserves and who's getting what. 
and I don't care at all. I'm not being critical. I, I'm leaving it up to the guys getting paid millions to do this. What the hell do I know? But I'm just thinking about like, <laughs> you know, body language and kids these days. Well, I can bail at any time or I deserve this or I'm in time. Is there any, do you have any feel for any potential climate issue as far as the general chemistry or, or state of the intangibles with the locker room right now? I, I think, uh, I think it's fair to ask those questions aloud. And what, what, what happens is, is that when you lose what you did in Maui, uh, p- people, whether, you know, wh- whoever they are, the, the, there's frustration there and, and everything starts to, to be questioned. Right. And I think when you play, you know, mid majors very close, uh, like like that have happened people it's almost in some ways like a loss uh it's not but it's it's like the people feel like they're they're like man we're, we're favored by this or that these are and so i think people are trying to figure out that that's the problem with so many young players and that's the problem when you you, you touched on it the minute allocation you start going what is going on and, and I, I i don't i don't pretend to know i i think it's fair to to ask about some of the body language, I think that at times, yeah, they just look. But you know, they've been injured. They're young. They're they're they, they haven't played well together. They haven't they haven't had all this the 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 pieces on the floor together lately. Um, it, it just seems a bit. Uh, I, I think I saw somebody go. Why is this team so disjointed? And maybe it's just all the above. But I mean, but but the 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 concerns and the reason why you're asking that is because you're playing some of these mid majors really close you're barely winning now granted you are winning that's the name i mean and again you're not making news for the wrong reasons uh and there's no shame you know that that's that's the flip side is you lose to creighton and ohio state there's no shame in that like those teams are are you know both competitive and, and really good especially at the time that you played them you played them tough and you you're correct and then you blow out louisville uh, but I, I think people are uh, worried and concerned and you kind of see how tough the league is. And, and again, th- they have every right to look at it and go, OK, this is going to be. But you're not there yet. But like when you have uh, a prized acquisition like Fardaw's leave, that was kind of the jewel of your off season, if you want to go so far as to say that, because I think he was kind of the toughest to get and, and all that when he when he's out of here. It, it 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 like raises you know questions like what what what's the deal you know and so um, because I th- I think that there for a bit you you could you could hypothetically say man when he gets back and we'll finally have our team that we thought we were gonna have g- give us a chance to maybe compete but now that's never gonna happen if he does in fact leave and I, mean, I have no indication that he's not going to leave but um, yeah it, it's just. Uh, you know, and, and like I don't know if Bacho is going to be able to play on Saturday versus uh, Houston, uh, uh, Jackson State, excuse me, in Houston. And so, you know, I mean, in, in Jackson State's one and eight, I believe, uh, and and they've played a murderous schedule. So you go look at their schedule, I and mean, they've played Indiana. They play. I mean, it, it, it's like they they shouldn't have won many of those games at all. But I, I just I just wonder what it'll look like on Saturday. But I, I don't know what what is why it's so disjointed, Casey, or why it feels that way. But I think part of it is we've answered our own questions. Youth, injury, inexperience, uh, the, the the minutes. Uh, I mean, you know, because we talked about this in, in, the, in a previous show. I mean, Kerwin Walton and Demorian Williams. You, you know you know who's a guy? You know who's a guy that we have not talked about at all that would be starting on this team, in my opinion? And we talked about all the guys that were gone last year. And this one just was kind of – He's kind of been forgotten about, but he 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 would be playing heavy minutes, and you desperately need somebody like him, Mr. Clarence, San Diego, Clarence Nadolny. Oh, Mr. French, oh, okay. Clarence Nadolny. Um, because I, I I think he he would maybe be starting on this team, uh, and he was, you know, almost came back, and it was kind of like, okay, is he gonna go pro? And it was just kind of this weird fade off into the sunset and yeah some girl on twitter uh made the announcement that he's going to france what happened to clarence nadolny yeah yeah and i think he <laughs> had somebody in his ear about a potential professional contract in france i think that there was a chance he's going to come back but i mean you just 
you just look at, at some of the experience uh, minutes that he could have provided you because he was, you know, he he was wild at times, but he was also, you know, uh, a culture he was a dog. Guy. He yes. was a dog. Yes, and not scared and, no. you know, uh, so. Uh, I never thought I'd be so envious and thinking back so uh, jealously of the days of Izmir Rizvich. Boy, if we just had one Rizvich. Wow, man, you're you're going way back. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of some of the longest cats ever I've taken for granted as far yeah. as simple size, because you're right, man. That uh that front line is getting thin. Uh if you're thinking about Bacho as like the most proven, and then Jennings, like anything you get will be great. And I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because KJ Allen, KJ Allen's an undersized big. Yeah. Right. So there it's just you you you're you're one of the smallest uh, teams you certainly will be in the in the Big Twelve, but uh you know, anyway, it's just yeah, it's crazy. I, I don't, I don't really know uh, how to how to react in some ways, but uh, you know, I guess we did the best we could there. But I guess we see, you know, uh, and 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 maybe maybe there's an arrival at some point here mid season uh, where you you can wait fill for real. Up. Well, maybe you can fill a scholarship now. That if, if you lose one, I mean, you can always go. There's other guys in the portal that you can. You can't. Yeah, but could this be like would... a trade deadline? Rasheed yeah. Wallace no. Zach was. <laughs> They they wouldn't be eligible immediately. Get you know, him on don't the get floor. me wrong. Yeah, it'd be like a Jalen Tyson <laughs> scenario. Hey, come yeah. here, you, you sit out your time, and and all those things. But uh, yeah, what just a, wild times, man. Wasn't expecting that one. Well, in in general, wild times for a college sports fan to try to keep up uh, with anything going left or right. But I'll tell you, if you're headed out of here in the way that Amac is, all I'm saying is get the get your hat, get the your coat. Get the yo bags, baby. Get the hell on out the door. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. The NIL thing may be the most interesting aspect of it to me personally. And uh, we'll probably continue to have those types of conversations in days and weeks and months to come, as now there is a hell of a lot more on the line uh, as far as what has been committed to a guy. And what then is his charge in fulfilling those obligations on the other side of that? commitment we're going to keep the air traffic control show running but we're going to turn to the gridiron coming up ahead we're going to talk red raider football is yes you have comings and goings there the transfer portal wheel is spinning fast and furious we'll also talk about that timing and uh, why that is coming up ahead on locked on texas tech but first today our show brought to you by sober driving You know, what are you going to get into coming up this holiday season? Hanging out with friends or family, kicking back a few. A few becomes too many, at least to drive. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you're thinking of calling for a ride, but you're like, nah, not going through it. I live nearby anyway. You can make it home. No big deal. What are the odds you're going to get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. You kill someone. I'm here to say that the final option there, that is the worst uh, that could happen, I think, just to answer that question. Everybody knows about the risks of drunk driving. The results are tragic, often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again, play it safe and plan ahead. To get a ride, it only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over thanks for joining us today on locked on texas tech on the locked on podcast network youtube anywhere you get podcasts is where you can find us each weekday subscribe if you haven't yet so you never miss an episode out here west of the 100th meridian where it's really going down he's chris level and i'm casey cowan we were talking hoops just a moment ago far does a mac at the dough we hardly knew you <laughs> would have loved to have gotten to know you but we didn't so see you later best of luck to you and on the gridiron side of things was uh, a busy time as well, Chris. And I'd like to, before we get into the list, can, can you give me some context on the date, which was, I believe, um, December 13th, I guess, that there is 
some type of cash coming from the university for certain scholastic achievements. And then on, yeah. if you're not in the portal and then yeah. on the other side of that, it's like, boom, cannonball into the portal party. What, what, what's that about? Cause I'm really not familiar with that. Yeah. You know, um, th- this again, for various reasons, you're touching on one there. This is kind of the sweet spot of, of, uh, you know, at least at Tech, uh, based on the way some things have been set up, you know, they they uh, the athletic department, I guess, through the the Red Raider Club, they had uh, they attached uh, some incentives to athletes based on you know certain criteria that they you know and you know your grades and and I and I don't know all the 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 specifics on you you know you had to be in good standing and had to have a certain GPA I think and and you had to be here through a certain time and all that stuff and and if so there was a, a chunk of change that you would get if you're here through the so it just uh, it it's kind of it kind of reminds me of like an NFL free agency where it's like hey man if we cut him March the 1st it, it's going to hit our salary cap by this many million if we hold on to him till June the 1st it reduces the hit quite a bit and so there's all these timing things and like that's NFL and salary cap related well this is a case where if you're on the team and, and on the roster and we're talking football here through a certain date, which was the last, I guess, day of the semester and the last finals and all those things, then you, you are able to, you know, get, 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 get the, the incentive based uh, money that, that is coming your way. And this is all legal. And there's so many schools that are now doing this. I think Texas tech was at the forefront of, of something like this. I think they were, Originally, they were like one of 10 or one of 15 schools in the country that were doing something similar. And it's not, I can't remember if it's like 2,500, 5,000 or something like that, but it's somewhere in that in that range. It may be less than that, but it may be per semester, you know, or maybe for the academic year and you, you, it halved or whatever. But that that is the the gist on kind of some of the, the timing here and maybe why you see some announcements uh, in the last uh, 24 hours or so on – uh, but but you're you're going to have another wave of, you know, no, I'm not saying it tech, but there'll be another wave of transfers elsewhere. Like after bowl games are played, and like right at the beginning of the year, I think uh, once kids go home around their friends and family or their trainer or whoever they take advice from, and <laughs> you know, th- yeah, they're going to be like, yeah, I mean, you know what, I need to, I need to, I need to look elsewhere for, uh, for, for whatever. So that little the, girlfriend. Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, there you go. I, I like what you did there. So that, that, that's the reason on, on this particular, I think, uh, okay. timing. Yeah. Okay. So the, the actual list and I'll run down some of these, but tell me if I'm missing anybody. Some that, I mean, obviously Donovan Smith, we've talked about already. Uh, that's kind of old news. Uh, Reggie Pearson was a couple of days ago. I think Texas tech fans have had a little time to process that, but, then you get this wave uh, with guys like Philip Bleedy, uh, Larry Moore, Ethan Card, Derek Lewis, Michael Shanahan, Amari Jones, and Tavares Elston. And I got to be honest, Chris, I kind of feel like you could have even slipped in a fake name or two to yeah, see if I would have known. catch it. But yeah. uh, how do we process some of these that are entering in now? Because I do wonder, that was a Freudian slip there. How many of these guys have been processed <laughs> possibly by the program? Yeah, so – I, I think uh, so. We're, we're just going to try to discuss the names as you presented them there, okay. because I think that you know by the time people see this, there could be more added or okay. or whatever. Um, okay, and so we're clear. Some of these, you know, just because they enter the portal doesn't mean that they're for sure leaving. Uh, but there's not a lot of production per se that that is leaving uh based on that i mean we, we talked about donovan that that will set that one off to the side so let's yeah. just attack attack the new ones um and, and i will say i think some of these individuals i don't think reggie is one of them i i and i'm not i'm not 100 sure but i don't think reggie is one of them but some of these other individuals are still practicing with the team and could play in the bowl game even though they're in the portal that that is part of the I think every program can handle that different. Every player's interest or every team's interest could handle that different. Like, hey, man, sure, we'd love to have you play. If as long as you're going to do the right things and all that, we'd love to have you play. Uh, some programs are just saying, hey, man, if you're in the portal, you know, you're like, you're you're, you're out. Uh, yeah. and so there's all different. That could be all over the map, program to program. It could be different. I, I'm just saying that some of these kids could, in fact, be practicing now, 
and play against Ole Miss or be available to play against gotcha. Ole Miss. Okay, so we're clear there. The, the, the headliner there is is Reggie Pearson. One, because I think that we all thought he was coming back. I think Joey had even said that. Um, two, that's that's the name that, that most people uh, are going to associate with. And I think three, along the lines of Big Maple, it's like one of the other great nicknames that will now depart Lubbock, and it makes me sad. <laughs> Uh, because you have the big maple and now the funeral director. Now we can't one out, man. I know it's You're just, right. geez, man, just like go. Yeah. Open up. Losing great nicknames. I mean, damn it. Um, <laughs> so uh, find a paper bag with a 40 ounce and just, yeah, just, just let that, let that foam just roll down the sidewalk, right down the gutter for those two great, wonderful nicknames that will never. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, okay. So, I think let, let's talk Reggie real quick. And and yeah. really there's not too much else to get into with the other guys because you're not losing really any production. Philip Liddy is is a guy that I was like, man, that's not good. He's a big guy. Right. He played some. If you remember, he his most production was at the very beginning of the season. Don't know how much he, you know, it was it gonna be expected of him realistically from getting better. I mean, I, I don't so I, I think you can work on replacing that. I think they're probably already doing that. But but Reggie, let's attack that one. He his season was such that he didn't play as much early on in the season. He gets back into the the mix, plays a bit, then he gets benched. Okay, he gets benched. It doesn't start a few games where he doesn't play. Tyler Owens emerges and plays, gets almost immediately hurt uh, after playing very well. And then, and we don't see a whole lot of Tyler Owens. I think to, toward the tail end of, of the season because he was kind of dinged up. It was some special teams only and things like that. With Reggie, I think there's always been a concern that he doesn't cover well. He busts coverages. He doesn't. He's not a cover guy. People think big hits. He certainly. Last time we saw him, he knocked the piss out of Dylan mm. Gabriel. He hurt uh, Eric Gray. I mean, th- those were two tremendous hits. He is very physical and all that. So I think that you take the good with the bad with him. I just think that you have to remember he was benched. Uh, he was playing. I think he's a great kid. I think that I'm just talking the player here. I don't sure. think they necessarily wanted to lose him. So in the bowl, I, the reason I don't think he's going to play in the bowl game is because Joey McGuire, when he visited with the media, was, uh, yeah, Rabbit plays free safety. Uh, the boundary safety is going to be Tyler Owens. And then we've still got muddy, you know, around around the line of scrimmage. And so you kind of already have included Tyler Owens in the starting lineup, and you've already kind of moved your chess pieces around the board a bit, and and away we go. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of where we're at. He only had one more year left to play, and uh, you know, maybe tomorrow's show we'll maybe talk about like, okay, what all this means, and maybe the 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 arrivals and 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 all those kinds of things man i'll i'll root just real quick i'll root for reggie uh where yeah. he winds up yeah uh, he's a good kid man on yeah. uh, black label radio and enjoyed that conversation and um him coming back from a point where he's essentially being told for the most part your football career is over great point yep. not only does he come back but his body is still used like a sledgehammer and i just thought that pairing uh, it was pretty impressive to me in that you go through such serious injury circumstances. You fight well, your way and, back, and then you continue to be that kind of physical presence. And, and Calvin, they they really – I mean, they, there was a lot of people that did a lot of work to get him yeah. eligible here or, or, or medically cleared, I guess is the right way to phrase it. I mean, there's a lot of stories written on that. Like, what exactly is the issue? What are you – I mean, but I, I just knew that was a lengthy process uh, of – just making sure he was cleared and able to play and, you know, and so, yeah, you're right. I don't, and and honestly, I think he's just, he's going closer to home. So it's not about uh, anything other than I think he just wants to be, he's I think originally from somewhere near Detroit, I think the Michigan state's been rumored and, and we'll see where he ends up. I did see Mississippi state had offered him as well uh, at at the onset of him entering the portal, but uh, so, so we'll see, but I mean, there, there's already a, a, an internal replacement, I think there in, in Tyler Owens, just got to keep him healthy. Cause I, I, I yeah. think, I think that there's some thought that Tyler Owens is an NFL guy. If he can really stay healthy and kind of put it together. I mean, he's got those kinds of measurables and athleticism and speed and, and, and all those things. But I mean, it's, it's fair to question Reggie's ability to cover. It's not fair to question his ability to, play the game as physical as any DB that you've had here since maybe Deshaun Johnson or, 
You know, I mean, you know, it's it's. I mean, yeah, he, he was, yeah, he 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 would bring it, and that. But that's what people think, and they don't. You know, there, there's another component to it as well. Right. Uh, on on some, so there's some good and some bad. But you know, I, yeah, heck yeah, I wanted him to stay around here because it would have been fun to have Reggie and Tyler Owens. But maybe maybe Reggie wasn't real keen on being a backup if Tyler Owens was going to start. You know, but I just know how this thing works. People get caught up in wanting to start, but it, by the end of the season, you're like, "Damn, son, we need all of y'all." I mean, we we need exactly we need, yeah. we need the whole room of dudes uh, to to factor in on special teams and defense, and you know, you know, just that that's just the way football seasons go. Yep, exactly. So, uh, where do we go next? Ethan Card next on, on my list, uh, a guy that's known as far as the program, but I don't feel like can't, he's ever can't cracked play, through. can't yeah. play. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, hey, man, good good luck. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I think good kid, but just I don't, I just don't think was going to be able to, to play here. There, there were some opportunities, I think, for him to be kind of the swing tackle or be the uh, be somebody that you know added tackle depth. But I mean, and again, and, and I think actually he may in fact practice and play in the bowl game. And, and, I, and I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just saying, I I, th- I think that can can you play? Sure. Can you play with what we're trying to do? That maybe is a different answer uh, to that question, you know. And like, what we're, we're, we don't want to. We're, the bar is up here. We've got to try to. So who the heck knows? But th- that that's the beautiful part about the portal. In that, if hey man, if you if you want to play and 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 you don't do it or you can't do it where where you're at. You have an opportunity to go find and seek employment elsewhere. That's the That's beauty true. of the whole yeah. thing. And uh yeah, but I I don't think there's anything anybody's got anything bad to say about a guy like Ethan Carter. Really, most of the guys on this list. I mean, I don't think there's a lot of disgruntlement there. I don't know the, the Bloody deal is a weird one to me. Uh just because I think he was kind of a younger interior defensive lineman. I mean, you know, you don't just have a ton of those. That that's a position you'll need to go fill. I mean, bottom line, you you're you need you need to go find one of those uh, via the portal because, see, we're talking now about you know losing guys that you're not going to go replace them with a high school guy. You 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 need grown uh, experience yeah. right now with like when you when you start talking about uh, the positions uh, of offensive line and defensive line for sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, Larry Moore, Derek Lewis, Michael Shanahan. I mean, Shanahan, an offensive lineman. You hate to see yeah. him walk away. Yeah, well, and Shanahan was a, one of the portal guys from last year, never yeah. factored in. I don't think he was going to. Uh, I, I think, it. you know, and, and Larry Moore was kind of, yeah, he's a, he's an offensive lineman. Maybe maybe he can help us on the defensive line. Just just wasn't just wasn't in the plans. All right, yeah. Larry was my guess for the one you tried to slide in that was fake, but he was real. You're saying <laughs> no, he's, no, he's all right. no. These are, are all too real. generic for oh, Larry Moore. Yeah, sure. These Larry are all Moore. yeah. These all right. are all real names. Um, I, thought, I thought it was Bob yeah. Sacramento next on the list. Yeah, <laughs> um, you, you've you've got uh, you know Derek Lewis. I, I think there was a, a, a thought that. Uh, well, I, I just I, I think he kind of factored in maybe in the summertime, and he got dinged up in, in August maybe, and he was kind of out of the mix. But I don't necessarily know if he had a choice on coming back. Uh, but he, he gets in the portal, so it doesn't really matter. And so, yeah, um, you know, just I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, I'll just leave it. Uh, at Jones that. or Elston. Well, and Amari Jones is a Coronado product. I think they took a chance on a local product. I don't know if he was even on the team technically this year. He had never played a snap. Elston was part of the signing class last year. <laughs> I think uh, I'm just getting visions of like Willie Mays Hayes being taken out on his bed in the morning. Like <laughs> this guy's not even on the list. How the hell? Yeah, is he yeah. <laughs> I, and, and I don't know what happened with Amari. I don't know, you know, but. None of these; these are just not names that it really had factored in. I don't know if they were going to factor in. And again, it doesn't make them bad people. It just this is this is the sport. I mean, there's a lot of churn with with rosters, and and most people that are listening to us right now probably don't know who or or could remember that. But if you follow recruiting closely, you've probably seen their names on signing class lists. Right. And again, you're going to get a whole list of. Uh, of kids next week because you're going to sign 23 or so high school prospects next week and so you know and 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 guess what a year or two from then you're going to look back at that list and go well 
there's about six to 10 of those guys that aren't even around anymore. That that's right. just the way it goes, man. Uh, <laughs> that's why people, some people choose to ride the wave and get caught up and follow it extremely closely. And then some people just are like, man, I'll worry about them when they're in the lineup and playing and, and then all that. I'm not going to get, you know, so everybody's got a different opinion about recruiting, but that's what I rode the ride for a while. I, I rode the roller coaster. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Kadron Boone and Sean Corker oh, tossed me off on the roller coaster. Oh my. That was about my departure point. You know, I had a, uh, I had a, a radio interview with Sean Corker one time. He was out of Florida mm-hmm. and uh, his, uh, you know, his, his, his high school coach is a guy named Matt DeBuck. And Matt DeBuck played at Texas Tech. And I remember having Sean uh, on a radio interview live on the air and everything. And I'm sitting there talking to him. And his mom starts to just undress him and yell at him and get on to him. I mean, right in the middle of the radio interview. And he's like, Mom, I'm doing an interview. And she's like, uh, she was like, she wasn't having it. She's like, I don't care. You know, I, I can't remember if it was clean your room or get in here or whatever, but it's all playing out all over live radio. And I'm like, Sean, probably best if we let you go, man. So you'll, you'll live here. I, that and- sounds maybe even more entertaining than a conversation with Sean yeah. Corker, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, funny, funny. Uh, you mentioned that one because that was an all timer for me. I'm like, and it's just, yeah. And the people are listening. Well, you just, are like, yeah. Look, you follow some of these guys and like <laughs> Boone doesn't even make it here. So it's like, okay, well that was yeah. disappointing. Corker did make it here, but didn't, if I'm remembering correctly, but didn't factor in. And it's like, wait, I rode this entire, right? He actually was a Red Raider. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, but that, he didn't ever blossom yeah. into what you thought he'd be. Really. Like, like is the case in, in, in you know, uh, you have to think about it like half the time. There, there was an old, yeah. uh, <laughs> th- this is what a, a coach here many, many years ago, a, a coordinator, He told me, he said, you know, and it really hasn't changed much. I mean, really over time, he's like, we bring, we bring that, that, that class in, you know, that they are allowed to report early. And in the first team meeting we have with them before the, the, the varsity, you know, in this case, before all the, the, the lettermen and returners show up, we get the, the, the freshman class here a few days early. And he goes, and we tell them, they sit them down, whether there's, 20 or 30 or 18 of them, whatever. And you just tell them, Hey man, look to your right, look to your left, yeah. you know, four or five years from now, half of you will be gone. You know, <laughs> the, this is the reality of it. The sports hard, uh, the, the injuries occur, uh, it's major home, college football, man, homesickness occurs, uh, coaching changes occur. There's all a million different reasons. And so you don't want to play is- school. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you never know. Cardale, baby. Cardale <laughs> Jones. Yes. You never know. I thought you were going to talk about what I got in my Excel strategies for learning class. It was just a pass fail <laughs> for different reasons, but they're like, look to your left, look to your right. One out of the three of you going to contract an STD in the next 24 hours. And I thought, <laughs> whoa, wait, what kind yeah. of class is this? Yeah. And uh, like- luckily, wasn't me. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers to those that I was sitting beside. But uh, and that could have been true also elsewhere. I don't it know. It doesn't burn when I yeah that whole thing yeah that's <laughs> we right. get processed in our own specific ways. All right, <laughs> coming up on tomorrow's edition, we will somewhat continue this conversation, but we'll talk about some of those hopping on board, some that have already made that decision clear. But we'll also get into what it means uh, as far as vacant shoes to fill, vacant scholarships to fill. And uh, what positions that could impact will get back to some of those priorities as uh, what you're looking for as far as window portal shopping, because it is the shopping season. Uh, After Locked On Texas Tech, make Locked On Sports Today your second listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts and be right back here tomorrow to make Locked On Texas Tech your first listen. What else could it be? Uh, Chris, appreciate the time and the insight as always, man. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, you know, we'll, I'll keep trying to call time out and see if we can't slow this week down. It's been a, all over the map, man. It's been wild. Uh, you know, a lot, lot run the gamut of emotions for sure. But uh, well, yeah, I got to we'll, tell you, this is a lot better than the first two uh, days of the yeah. week. The topics of conversation there. Yeah, yeah, and it's still yeah. It uh, and, and by the way, uh, I don't know if he even listens to this. He's been around a long time, and he's one of the few people that have really seen the eras. But shout out to Zane Perry. Uh, and the football program for putting that sticker on the back of that helmet for that bowl game and with yeah. the skull and crossbones. I mean, big ups to you, man. That is that is awesome. Uh, much respect for that. And, 
I, I think that's really, really cool and, and really well deserved, man. I, I, uh, I, I was pleased to see that, man. That's awesome. I was as well. And yeah. uh, Joey McGuire rocking the skull and sword shirt uh, and yes. his meeting with the media yesterday also. So absolutely. Uh, I'm glad we're going to be taking that route. Uh, shout out to ZP. And let's just make sure we also get one of those double T's. You know, the one on the side of the helmet <laughs> for that. Bowl yeah, game. He's an original. He came up under Mike Leach right on that staff equipment wise. Equipment yeah. guy for tech football for those that don't know. Yeah, Z Zane's been around here a long time, man, and uh, he does an unbelievable job. Uh, he is, you know, he, he's he's one of the few people that I, I've I can associate. I mean, because Jeff Jeff Jones over there at the pro, it, 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 it really runs the FTF. Uh, Zane, I mean, it used to be T Mac, man. Tommy was my guy that, that right. kind of bridged the gap. There's just not a lot of people that have been over there since I've been doing this that are still around. I mean, because the, the names change and just you get side, but yeah, Zane, Zane's an OG uh, over there and uh, came an Ansel that, uh, that, that helps Zane out now. Those guys just do a phenomenal job uh, taking care of making, you know, all the throwback uniforms and all that stuff, man. Yeah, but I, I just want to make sure I got that in as is the first couple of shows this week were, were very difficult and, and everybody's emotions are raw. I mean, I, I've just seen the, the, the national stories, the local stories. I mean, the guy just was uh, a treasure man. And uh, yeah, but I, I'm glad that tech football will do the, do that uh, at the bowl game. And that that's, that's awesome, man. But uh, yeah, we'll keep hope alive, man. And I'm sorry I've rambled long enough. Sorry. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. You stuff those sorries in a sack. We are here for your <laughs> ramblings each weekday on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Join us coming up for another round tomorrow. We will see you on the other side right here on Locked on Texas Tech.